And, and now I would like to um, give the floor to our second panelist, Emre Roll. Uh, Emre um, studied um, history at Sabanji University and um, also a master's degree from Sabanji University and uh, finally his PhD degree uh, from Leiden University. Um, he worked at Leiden University for five years and um, he is currently working at Sabanji University at the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and uh, his book The Ottoman Crisis in Western Anatolia, Turkey's Belle Epoque and the Transition to a Modern Nation State was published by uh, the well-known publishing house of London, I.B. Tauris. So, Emre. Um, thank you very much. Um, first of all, uh, Hepinize Günaydın. Uh, First of all, good morning, Kalimera. Like the Ranting Foundation for this wonderful occasion. It's nice to see a lot of fellow scholars and colleagues and friendly faces. Uh, it was a great, great pleasure to commemorate a great scholar and a great friend whom I had the privilege to meet at a very later stage in his life. Um, I also admired Wangelis's work and personality a lot in the short period of years that I had the privilege to meet him. Actually, he was, uh, his dissertation was the first dissertation I read in the library of Leiden University when I started my doctoral degree there. Uh, it was a pleasure to remember nice memories about him. Um, my presentation today is titled The Transformation of Focha, also known as Fokia, from boom town to ghost town, and what that tells us about the history of the late Ottoman Western Anatolia. The Ottoman county of Focetain, and here Focetain means two Focas, Tain coming from the Farsi Persian meaning double Focas, or Foca as it is known today, was once a booming county with two principal port towns, uh, thanks to the rapidly expanding economy and demography. Situated on the Aegean shore at northwest of Izmir, the county of Focetain was a humble county with two port towns, Eski, Palya, and Yeni, Nea, Focha, or Fokia, that acted as agrarian hubs of the large Ottoman Empire until the influence of modern expansion of European economies started to change that. And for those of you who are not familiar with the region, uh, here are two nice maps. Um, on the right hand side, the small map shows you the location of modern day Focha County, which is more or less identical to the county of Focetain in the late Ottoman period. The numbers one and two respectively indicate the locations of the two large port towns. Number three indicates the old city center of Izmir or Simirna. Number four indicates a very important economic area, salt pools of Chamalte, which actually played a significant role in the economic expansion of the county of Focetain. And number five uh, is uh, Uzunada or Köstenci, which becomes sort of an important part of a story during World War I. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Ottoman geography at large, at the background you see a map that was drawn between the creation of an independent Greece and the loss of the Balkan territories by the Ottomans uh, in the Balkan Wars. Um, there you can also see uh, the red arrow showing us the location of Focha or Fokia. Um, the county's economy expanded with the incorporation into world markets for about a century following 1820. So this is a hundred year old story of growth which will be interrupted at a certain point. Trade gradually became second most important aspect of the local economy following naturally agriculture and it created a pull factor for migration. By mid 19th century, Ottoman Orthodox Christians predominantly Greeks, replaced Ottoman Muslims as the dominant demographic group during the period of growth. A radical change because in the past, before the growth, Muslims used to be the largest demographic group in the county, but that is reversed. Ottoman Orthodox Christians, or Rum as they were called by the Ottoman administration, were also the dominant social group in international trade. The expansion and transformation of Foca came into an abrupt halt with the Balkan Wars between 1912 and 1913. So the process that starts in 1820s comes to a stop in 1912-1913. Sorry, 
The Balkan Wars were only the beginning. The ousting of Rum from Fochetain in 1914, the Great War, the Turkish War of Independence, or the Greco-Turkish War of 1919-1922, and the following compulsory population exchange fundamentally upset the dynamics of Focha together with the rest of the Anatolian, Western Anatolian regions. After this period of turmoil, Focha turned into a small fishing village, a ghost town compared to its recent past with an economy much less significant and isolated and with a demography almost entirely homogenized by the early days of the newly found Republic of Turkey. Today, I will argue that the transformation of Foça from a boom town to a fishing village, from growth to decline, from demographic diversity to demographic homogeneity, and from an incorporated economy to a quote-unquote national economy is a transition which is indeed the reflection of a regional and also actually an imperial pattern. It is an all too familiar pattern that one observes in the scholarly studies of the largest city of the region, Izmir, or of other booming port towns like Ayvalık or Ayvali. This is a pattern caused by the design transformation that stems from the decisions of the Ottoman political actors at the time, namely the Unionists and later the Kemalists. This design transformation is the transformation from an empire to a nation state in the case of Turkey, but actually multiple nation states in the case of post-Ottoman states. It is a political project designed to, quote unquote, rejuvenate and consolidate the central power at the face of, again, quote unquote, perceived threats by opting out of empire for nation state. The origins of this transition could be observed in the actions and ideas of young Turks slightly before and thereafter in the second constitutional period. The exact moment of transition from empire to a nation state is a matter of considerable scholarly debate, and honestly, it was one of our best topics to discuss with Wangelis during our brief encounters. Nevertheless, it is safe to say that after the Balkan Wars, a multi-ethnic empire was no longer a desired option for at least some parts of the Ottoman Empire, and Western Anatolia was indeed one such part at the eyes of the Ottoman decision makers by that time, the Unionists. Looking at the regional history of Izmir and its hinterland in this particular way puts this larger transition at the center, helps us connect the micro-histories of transformation and destruction in the Ottoman Empire at large. Situating the local and the regional within the imperial not only allows us to connect Izmir to Foça or to a regional proximate like Ayvalık, but it also allows us to study connections with other Ottoman regions' histories of transformation and destruction, such as Karamürsel or Diyarbakır. In other words, I argue that when you look at Foça, you do not only easily connect it with Izmir or Western Anatolia, you can connect that history with the empire at large. The history of Foça's transformation from boomtown to ghost town is a testament to that statement, as I will now try to demonstrate. I first propose to look at the transition of Foča to make a point, and I will be very brief in my summary. This way, it will be possible to compare its transition with the other parts of the region and with the Ottoman Empire to see if there are any similarities. In the year of 1908, also the year of the Second Constitutional Revolution in the Empire, the county of Fochetain had about 18,728 residents. 14,444 of them were Rum, or Ottoman Orthodox Christians, and the rest were Muslims. This was an enormous expansion from 6,000 people in 1880. The demographic growth continued, and at its peak, the county of Fochetain had about 23,687 residents, most of whom lived in the central port town Eskifocha or Palyafokia. This quick and considerable demographic expansion was the 
direct consequence of the county of Fochetain's incorporation into world markets. Expanding economy became a pull factor, much like today, for migration, and Ottoman Orthodox Christians replaced Ottoman Muslims as the major demographic group during this period. New neighborhoods, quays, depots, international trade establishments, schools, churches, and a new mosque were built during this period. And here is a nice picture showing us the port city of Eskiforcha or Palyafoke in 1912. The two large structures that you're seeing in the picture were commissioned by Duyuna Umumiye, the public debt administration. They are there to restore the salt which was exported all the way to Sri Lanka at that time. And the new neighborhood that you see on the lower side of the picture is called Kuchukdenis or Mikrosialos, an expanding new part of Old Focha. The prospect of growth came to a halt with the coming of the Balkan Wars. Following the end of the conflict, forcefully displaced Muslims, or Muhajirs, from the Balkans triggered a refugee crisis in the Ottoman Empire. Both the Ottoman Empire and the Kingdom of Greece weren't satisfied with certain aspects of the peace treaties that followed war. Another war among them was considered imminent. Actually, this triggered an arms race for naval superiority in the Aegean already in the year 1913. Not only these, the Unionists, or the members of the Committee of Union and Progress, were also empowered and radicalized during and following the Balkan Wars. The Unionists, or the members of the Committee of Union and Progress, have been pivotal figures in the late Ottoman history, first as the dominant voice of opposition in the late Hamidian era, then as the quote-unquote heroes of liberty with the Ottoman Constitutional Revolution of 1908, and finally as the members of an authoritarian unionist regime after a successful coup during the period between the First and the Second Balkan War in 1913. It was in this final stage that they achieved consolidation of power, accelerated their centralist reforms, and finally dragged the Ottoman Empire into the Great War. It was also in this period they became the dominant decision makers of the period and triggered the transformation of Focha and places like Focha in Western Anatolia and in other parts of the empire. In the spring of 1914, between the 11th and the 18th of June, the county of Fochetain was circled by a group of Muslim bandits, or Chetes as they were called back then. They weren't from the region, and they weren't stopped by the Ottoman Gendarmerie. They forcefully displaced Ottoman Orthodox Christian residents of the county at a gunpoint, subjected them to violence if they resisted, and pillaged their property in the process. This was coming on top of an already damaging anti-Christian, mostly anti-Greek boycott at that point that affected the region very recently. The old thing displaced the entire room community of Foggia. And the picture that you're seeing in the background is one of the rare pictures in the late Ottoman history which was taken during the moment of Austin of the Ottoman Christians from the port town Eskifoca. Soon enough, uh, the, houses of the, the houses and the property of the room population was reallocated to Muhajirs who had been waiting in the ports of Izmir for relocation. Muslim refugees, who were also forcefully displaced, like the room of Focha, were following the Balkan Wars. The Unionist government clearly was negligent and also culpable for a variety of reasons that I discuss in my studies. This was a regional phenomenon, not only affecting Focha, a spring of organized chaos, as I choose to refer to it, and it caused large-scale displacement of the entire Christian communities from the Western Anatolian short light. It was a de facto population exchange, quote unquote, a preemptive security measure, in the words of the Unionists, and the convenient opportunity to homogenize the region's population that helped the Unionists to pursue their radicalized Muslim nationalist agenda. The Ottomans joined the Great War following this all thing, following the spring in 1914. More destruction and displacement of both Muslims and Christians ensued during, the, during and after the Great War. The Unionists expected the war to rejuvenate the empire and save it, from, save it by transforming into a nation state. It was in this very process of nationalist and centralist engineering that started immediately after the Balkan Wars with places like Focha, 
that some of them become perpetrators of violence, mass displacement, and wholesale demographic engineering of Anatolia. Therefore, what happened in Foča repeated itself elsewhere and had larger and much more drastic consequences, especially when the tides of the Great War turned against the Ottomans starting in the year 1915. The Unionists perceived their actions to be great sacrifices, quote unquote, and service, quote unquote, to a nation and the nation state to be born in the form of modern Turkey. So three themes become clear. A radical demographic and physical transformation in the form of decimation and destruction, heavy influence of exogenous actors and processes, and finally the influence of political network, the unionists, um, that causes the restructuring of the regional power relations. Now, do we see these themes elsewhere in Western Anatolia or beyond that in the rest of the empire? The answer to both questions are yes. For instance, the demographic transformation that homogenized Forcha, the picture, the photograph that you're seeing in the background, damaged it and decimated it, but this was not only a phenomenon that affected Forcha. Actually, approximately 160,000 Ottoman Orthodox Christians in the same period were being hosted from other parts of the Western Anatolian seaboard, seaboard including places like Çeşme, Seyrek, Edremit, Burhaniye, Kemer, Kınık, Balıkesir, Bergama, Karaburun, Menemen, Ödemiş, Ulubat, Eskice, and towns and villages on or near the Kasaba Aydın railways around Bursa and around Ayvalık. In other words, it was a Western Anatolian phenomenon. The coming of the Great War made things worse in more or less all of the places mentioned above, but also beyond. Allied bombing raids and the damage they caused in Urla almost erased the settlement from the map, just like it damaged Foča. Muhajirs who were settled in the houses of the properties of the Austed Greeks became a major political issue not only in Foča during the Great War, but again in almost all of the places that are mentioned above. Actually, the whole legitimacy of Venizelos' irredentist campaign into Western Anatolia was framed as, and here I quote, a peacekeeping operation, the need for which was legitimized by pointing out to the hosting of Ottoman Orthodox Christians prior to the Great War. Venizelos aimed to repatriate ousted Greeks and mostly succeeded in doing so only to recreate another refugee crisis by causing redisplacement of Muhajirs for a second time during the Greco-Turkish War. The end of that war, following the victory of the Turkish National Resistance Movement, marked the end of the long period of warfare that effectively started in 1911. When the three teams mentioned above are taken as a reference, and the same period in the rest of the Ottoman Empire, many connections and similarities are observed. The same period of almost constant warfare brought radical demographic and physical transition, heavy influence of exogenous actors, and processes and the unionists' remaking of the power relations also in places like Karamürsel and the Erbakır. When, you, when we look at these cases carefully, actually we see a real connection. Um, in small towns like Karamürsel in the northwestern of Anatolia, to major urban areas like Diyarbakir in the southeastern parts of the empire, where large segments of another group of Ottoman Christians lived. There, Armenians, but not Greeks, were affected by the same, per same period of transition, and again, together with the Muslims of the same region. The influence of transition were much more visible and prominent during, the, during and after the Great War, unlike the case with Foča. Um, I will limit myself to demonstrate this by a single example based on one of the themes in Forcha's transition, the unionist role. When we look at the cases of Karamürsel and Diyarbakir, actually the very people who were responsible in the deportation of Ottoman Christians in Forcha, Talat Pasha, the Ministry of Interior, Mehmet Reşit Şahinger, one of the founders of the committee, an architect and an executioner of the demographic policies, Ferit Bey, the Governor General of Kaimakam during Forcha's expansion uh, hosting, also have active roles in the hosting of Armenians in Karamürsel and also of Diyarbakir. To me, the conclusion to me made out of the connections and the history mentioned in this presentation is clear. The transformation of Forçatayn or Força is not only a microcosm of the regional transition in Western Anatolia, 
but it is also a reference history to the macro-level transition from Ottoman Empire to post-Ottoman nation-states. We need to connect the seemingly separate histories of transformation that affected all Ottoman peoples, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, and multiple Ottoman geographies in the Balkans, the Aegean, the Eastern Anatolian provinces and the likes. Only this could provide us a holistic picture of the great transformation in this geography. By virtue of this argument, understanding the micro contributes to understanding of the macro. Understanding Focha, Urla, Cheshme, Izmir, or Ivalik contributes to our understanding of Trace, Central Anatolia, Black Sea, or Eastern Anatolia. Um, thank you for listening. I had to cut it short because I tried to speak slowly. Um, thank you for your patience.